Bill Yarrow is probably one of my dearest and oldest literary friends in the Midwest. No, he is a professor of English at Joliet Junior College and an editor at the online journal Blue Fifth Review. Send him your work. He's the author of The Vig of Love, Blasphemer, Pointed Sentences, and five chapbooks. Most recently, We All Saw It Coming. <laughs> Against Prompts, his fourth full-length volume is forthcoming from Lit Fest Press in 2018. Please welcome Bill Yarrow. Woo! Yeah! All right, Bill! Thank you, Robert. Uh, thank you, everybody, for uh, being here, and thanks for including me in this wonderful reading. Everybody's been fantastic. Um, this poem, uh, or maybe it's a flash, is called Body Parts. They were playing chess with body parts of children that had been sacrificed to God. The battalions of pawns were tiny teeth. The darting rooks were eyes. The frosty nights were hollow cheeks. The blushing bishops were ears. The queen was a nose. The king was a tongue, upright but unsteady, like a vertical snake. Antoine was red, his soldiers bristling and bloody. Emily had black, her men dark with decay. Antoine went first and moved the tooth in front of his tongue one space. Emily moved the same tooth, two squares. Antoine took out his nose's cheek. Emily nudged her tooth forward another square. Antoine matched her by moving out his other cheek. Emily considered his move and put her hand on her ear. Antoine attempted the moves leading to Blake foil mate, but as he went through the tired motions, Emily had moved out all of her black teeth, forming a mode of absence between her front and rear lines, her nose proudly exposed. Then Antoine played the irresistible tongue. Emily countered with the insatiable eye. It was as if they were playing two different games, or playing two different kinds of chess, one landed, one lunar. I gave up my space in the front row and pushed out through the thronging crowd, which howled or moaned at each succeeding move. The hall was air conditioned, and as I was cold, this spurred the urge to empty my bladder. Who's ahead in points, I asked the bearded man in the urinal best of mine. No pieces have yet been exchanged, he says, zappy-like, staring straight in front of him. I zip up and wash my hands. I would have liked to have stayed, but having given up my seat and realizing there was no viable way back into the hall, I left regretful but resigned. I read in the next day's paper that patriarchy, though threatened, had prevailed. Antoine had won, but so shaken had he been when playing Emily, he ceded the championship to her. Emily thanked him, but declined the offer. She refused to win the crown by forfeit and was applauded in the press for her integrity. Self-righteous cried her fans. Self-righteous cried her foes. I was undecided. I could see both sides of the equation as I could see both sides of the game, its divergent opponents and contradictory styles. Ultimately, though, it made no difference. The government stepped in and citing sanitation and health concerns, banned all games played with body parts. <laughs> first part of a long poem, uh, the poem's called The Intervention, uh, and it's dedicated to uh, Joni Reese. <laughs> a horde of well-intentioned poets I had met online descended upon Lake Forest where I had gone to attend a lecture entitled Young Love. <laughs> they accosted me outside the hall and dragged me to a craft brewery where, in a back room decorated with stainless knives, they surrounded me and then drew their circle tighter. Bill, they said solemnly, you're publishing too much too quickly. We think that's unhealthy. We want you to slow down. You're becoming a fame whore. A fame whore, I shouted. I have as much integrity as any poet here. And then I paused as the absurdity of my words dripped like dark irony down my legs. I looked around the room with the sharp noses and bulbous heads of the assembled poets come to save me for myself. But when had that ever worked? Hadn't Kafka taught us there's no rescue, especially from indenture to amuse? What were they going to do anyway? Get me banned from submittable? 
I brandished my new manuscript. You'll never stop me, never. <laughs> Wriggling free from the grip of their overdeveloped index fingers, I ran out into the octave of streets and signs, hissing, you dare tell me what not to do? Me? Hear me, recreants. I'm unfriending you. A whole rock lot of you. This one's called uh, Get a Grip. <laughs> Get a Grip. There's a hole in my brain out of which pour all my good impulses. And so I sit at the table of behavior next to the witch of logic who kicks me whenever Lady Compassion bats her eyes at me. So heed this. Whosoever talks with me talks not with me, but with that part of me I resent with all that's left of my heart. <laughs> Woo! And uh, this is the one that appeared in Boink. Uh, thank you, Robert, and thank you, everybody at Boink. It's called uh, Speaking to the Dead. I didn't hear your last words or see your last eyes. I didn't reach you in time. So I sat by your corpse, silently saying goodbye. I am in that process, not sour, not sweet, that yoke speaking, which can't because the heart won't let it utter its whispered last word, but stutters instead like the awful-eyed idiot of love, stroking a hand and thinking of speech. Nothing pulses now from your cold, dead palm. No sounds exit, no language leaks. You're beyond the infinite weakness of words. I'm still in their thrall, caught in the thrashing eloquence of unregistered, inarticulate emotion. What does death do? It petrifies pain, reifies loss, installs nothing new, revokes everything old. Woo! Uh, and I'll end with this one, which is called All About the Tumor. <laughs> Stupidity is not a mask, it is the face. And it is the face that betrays us always. That is the lesson of mirrors. I was apoplectic about corruption. I appealed to outside magic, ideas bright and dark. Sonia solaced me. Flirting with eternity, strangling the larynx of the sky, I stood on edges and matriculated fervency. I read in the phonemes of the trees, happiness is the habit of right reason, practicing vice. My course was set. I fell in with fellows, derogatory men who lived on the verge of mercy. They sequenced my DNA, for it was all about the tumor, you see. For the health of the state, it had to be ripped away. We used mindfulness. I recuperated in Sonia's arms. Some days, we think back and remember Abelard. It's a wonderful life until it's not. Thank you.